today I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to configure an extended or a named access control list on an ICX7150 switch. And to do this, the easiest way is for me to start out and introduce my lab environment to you. I have a single ICX7150 C12P switch in the lab. I have two VLANs configured. I have VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, and they are untagged in certain ports, as you can see. I have a configured two VE or virtual Ethernet interfaces. I have VE10 and VE20, and they are in two separate networks. VE10 is the 192.168.10.1 network, class C. VE20 is 192.168.20.1, class C. Of course, the switch is a running a layer three router code. And on my LAN in VE10, I have a single H320 access point and a Windows 10 laptop. In VE20, I have an H320 access point and a MacBook Pro laptop. Um, the IP addresses, um, I have DHCP running for VE10 and VE20. Um, you can see the IP addresses. So the H320 in VE10 got an IP of 10.21. The Windows 10 got 10.22. Um, the H320 in VE20 got 20.22 and the MacBook Pro in VE20 got IP address 20.1. So that is the lab environment, um, pretty straightforward. And what we're going to do now is log into my switch. I'm using PuTTY, I've SSH'd into my switch on COM5. And there we have it, I can run a quick show version to show you the firmware we are currently running there's our software is 08095 CA it is our recommended GA and as you can see we are booting from our primary partition and that is SPR that is a router code I'm going to go into enable mode EN shortened for enable and I'm quickly going to show you my config. Right, the interesting stuff. Um, I have, as I said, VLAN 10. And I have it untagged in ports 1 through 6. VLAN 20 untagged. And I have that in Ethernet 1 slash 1. 7 through 11. VLAN 30 is configured. That is just my breakout onto the internet on port 1 slash 1 slash 12 on VE30. To continue, as I said, I'm running DHCP services. I've got a sales pool on the 10 network and I have an operations pool on the 20 network. Continue. I have my VE interfaces, as I've said, VE10 and a VE20. I also have a VE30 configured. That is the internet breakout on 192.168.0. The gateway is dot one for that network. And that is my config currently on the switch. Now, just to introduce extended and named access control lists. Um, in a previous video, we spoke about standard access control lists that basically only sort of permit or deny on source IPs. Um, extended and named access control lists, um, they have a lot more functionality. You know, they do need a source and a destination address. But we can now filter on things like whether it's TCP traffic, whether it's UDP traffic, different protocol types and different port numbers, which is really, really cool. Now, an extended access control list, you know, when you first configure it, you have to give it a number. And that number is between 100 and 199. So in other words, if you were going to configure your first extended access control list, you could start with the number 100. Your next access controllers could be 101, 102, all the way through to, of course, 199. When you configure a named access control list, the fact that you give it a name simply means there is no limit to the number of access control lists or named access control lists that we can configure. So I'm now going to go into configure terminal, conf t, and I am going to create my access control list. So the command is IP access list, 
give it a question mark right over there. And as you can see, you can select whether it's a standard or an extended. In this case, I am configuring an extended access control list. I'll use the question mark. And as I said, you know, you can give this access control list a number of between 100 and 199. In this case, I'm going to use 101. I'm going to put in a question mark there. Um, you know, I could have said extended and actually just put in a name. If I put in a name, of course, there's no limit on how many of these I could configure. But for demonstration, I'm going to put in 101. That's my first line. So we are now in the context for configuring access list 101. Now, with any access control list, you have to specify, deny, or permit rules. It's important to know that, you know, any traffic that hits this access control list, you know, it looks at the traffic in a sequence. These access control lists are read from top down, and as soon as we have a match on that traffic, you know, whether it's permit or deny, that rule is executed immediately. Um, it's also important to note at the end of an access control list, there is an implicit deny statement, which means that in your access control list, well, you actually have to have at least one permit statement. Otherwise, all your traffic is going to be blocked. Now, in my example, I'm quickly going to shoot over to the lab. Uh, let me just get back to my lab environment. There we have it. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be blocking any ICMP traffic comes in from VE10, so ICMP traffic sourced out of VLAN 10 on VE10's interface. So any traffic coming in from here through the switch, trying to reach a destination network of 192.168.20.0 on a class C, well, I'm actually going to deny that traffic and I will be denying that traffic when it comes in on the VLAN 10 interface. Now, that's quite simple to configure. I'm going to go into that configuration for you right now. Now, my first line is actually going to be a deny statement. So I'm going to deny. And as I said, we're going to deny ICMP traffic. Now, you could go in and say, well, deny what? Now, I could deny things like GRE. ICMP, um, IGMP um, for Internet Gateway Message Protocol. I could deny IP, OSPF, TCP traffic, UDP traffic. So there's a lot that you can in terms of protocol that you can work with. So I'm going to deny IC, ICMP traffic. Now, as I said, with extended, you need to specify a source. Now, it could be a single IP address, it could be a host, it could be any source, it could be an entire subnet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deny that traffic from 192.168.10, sorry, my 10 network, my VE10 network. And I'm going to use a mask of slash 24, which is class C. Now, it's important to know that you can use wildcard masks, which is basically an inver in, in version of a standard mask. So a standard mask for class C would be 255.255.255.0. Wild cost, you would have to put in 0 .0 0.0.0.255 to represent a slash 24. With an ICX switch, it's quite simple. I can just go in and specify a forward slash 24, and it, automatically formats it and puts it in as a wildcard mask for you. I really like that. So we are denying ICMP from the 10.0 network. We now specify a destination, and that's going to be 192.168.20.0. Also a Class C network. Now, if we look at this, we put in a question mark, and we go, well, we are working with ICMP. Now, we can deny any ICMP type. We can deny an echo. We can deny echo replies. Um, you know, we can put in things like source quenching, time exceeded, um, 
timestamp reply, traffic policy. So there's a lot that we can configure when it comes to ICMP. Now, I'm just going to be using any, so I'm going to block any ICMP type of traffic in, in this demonstration, but just know, depending on the protocol you're working on, um, you know, you can be quite granular in what you want to configure, whether it's a permit or a deny statement. So there's my first line in my extended access control list of 101. And as I said, we do need a permit rule. So I'm now going to go and put in permit IP. And I'm going to specify, if I say permit IP, again, it can be from a specific host, from a specific IP, IP subnet, or even any. So I'm going to permit any source if I put in the question mark, it is to a destination. And I'm going to say any, any. Right, now that is my extended access control list and it is configured. Now in my lab environment, I have a, a wireless connection. And it is connected directly to my gateway routers network of 192.168.0.1. Um, I need that wireless connection so that I can mirror my screen basically on from a tablet. I've got an iPad Pro in my lab. I also have a cabled connection from the Windows 10 machine that is connected into VE10. So at this point, I disconnect my wireless. <coughs> I've just turned it off. And I'm going to confirm in my command prompt that I still have connectivity to the internet so i'm pinging a google dns server yeah i have connectivity there and i want to confirm if i can actually ping the ve20 interface which i can we're getting a reply from 192.168.20.1 which is super so i have that connectivity now as i said in the lab i want to block any icmp traffic that is sourced from VE10 from reaching VE20. Right over there, I could absolutely reach VE20's sort of gateway of 192.168.20.1. Now, what I need to do is I need to take my named or my extended access control list and apply it to an interface. Now, I could absolutely apply this to an Ethernet interface if I wanted to. If I go in to a physical interface, I can go IP access group and specify, of course, the number that you used or the name that you used for your access controllers. So I could go 1, 101. And if I put in the question mark at this point, well, are those packets, are we applying this access control list to packets that are inbound to that interface or outbound from that interface. Um, or I could go into a VLAN and in my demonstration, I'm going to be configuring it for VLAN 10 and apply this access controllers to VLAN 20, 10. So what I want to do is I want to show you and I'll do an extended ping for demonstration. There it's running. I now want to apply my IP access group. Take note, it's no longer called an IP access list when you're configuring it or attaching it to a specific interface. So I'm going to use IP access group 101, and I'm going to specify that traffic inbound. There you go. I've just applied the IP access group 101 in, and as you can see, I am now getting a request timeout. So that means that ICMP traffic is now being blocked from VE10 network trying to get to VE20. It's been blocked at the VLAN 10. As soon as I remove my IP, no IP access group 101 in, as soon as I remove it, you then see that I now start getting a reply. So guys, that is how to go about configuring a standard, no, sorry, an extended or a named access control list on a Ruckus 
ICX switch. Um, I hope this has been informative for you and have a fantastic day. Thank you very much.